My name is Muhammad Ali, I'm an artist. I'm not the boxer, some of you might know the boxer, but I use different ways and different techniques to express myself. And using tools like these, spray can, as you can see here, um, and I use that to paint murals on buildings and walls. Well, I'll talk about that shortly. But I use also other tools and techniques, such as digital techniques, using an Apple stylus on an iPad, which I'll be giving you a demonstration to you shortly. But I also do other things, use brushes, I, I, I play with theatre as well. I paint live on stage, sometimes in front of huge audiences, uh, while a, a bit of music is playing and I'm painting at the same time. So there's different types of art. Art can be many different forms, I'm sure you all know. Now, it's been a difficult period. We've all had difficulties struggling with lockdown and the coronavirus, and it's very sad as well. It's very sad how people are sick, and many people have also left this earth because of corona. Now, myself included, I've had corona, my mother had it as well, and she didn't make it sadly. Only a few weeks ago, she has now left this earth, um, which is why the reason why I've come here now is to continue to try to help people to feel better about things, to try and bring a bit of light into a, a world of darkness right now, bring a bit of color to our uh, lives. And speaking of bringing a bit of color, I think you're all a bit fed up of this crazy black background with stars floating around me. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna jump to this screen. There we go, that's a lot better, isn't it? So I am not in some fancy studio. I'm just here in my garage at home, as you can see through the multiple cameras. I've got a camera above here. I've got a camera just there looking at me. And where are my other cameras? I've got one in front of me there as well. I've got my little setup here in my garage um, because during lockdown I thought since we can't go out using this way, these cameras to you know, do exciting things like art lessons which I'm going to be doing with you shortly, um, I thought we'd, I'd do a very special uh, video session with you where I can send you my videos through these different cameras all down through the internet to you directly and I could speak to you and show you how I do my art on my iPad. You can see my iPad down here. See that? Let me see if I can give you a better view. There you go. There's an iPad on the, on the camera over there. And I'm going to be drawing live on there, giving you a little demonstration. And then you're all going to have a go at doing this great um, experiment of using a billboard to say what you want to say to the world. Right? Sounds exciting, right? So before any of that, though, how I got into the arts and how I'm now an artist for about 20 years now. I've been a full-time artist. I have no other job. This is my job as an artist. I paint murals. I travel around the globe, around the world. I've been to many, many different continents and painted my art and shared a bit of my art with different communities and made people feel happy. And that's what I like to do. I like to make beautiful things that make people feel good and feel happy and hopeful about the future. And that's what I'm hoping, what I'm going to be doing with you in today's session is showing you how art can give us a bit of hope and allow us to dream about the world that we want to see in the future, okay? About how we want to change the world for, in a positive way. And we see the news and we see such sadness, but how can you and how can we all have the power to change the world that we live in? And that's what I've tried to do, especially after hearing the sad news about my own mother, who's now not with us, someone who, you know, COVID has taken away. However, we can lift ourselves up and say, no, I'm not going to let this make me sad and uh, make me feel gloomy. Uh, but rather, I'm going to be talking with you guys and sharing how we can all change the world now and we become stronger, bigger and better. And COVID is certainly not going to bring us down, but rather it's going to make us want to go out in the world and bring a bit of color to the world that we live in. So why are we looking at this crazy guy on a... Uh, motorbike is because I used to make games for a living. That's right, about 15, no, 17, 18 years ago, I used to design games like this. Okay, you can see I'm going to slide across on my iPad here. Dave Mirror Freestyle BMX is another game I made. I used to design the front end graphics for the game. So everything you saw before you go into a game, like the menu screens, things like this, that was my job. And I made it for the, the platform, which was Game Boy Advanced, right? That was, it's like a handheld device, a bit like a Nintendo Switch, right? But a handheld game, 
games like these, all of the graphics um, before you got into the game was my job. Land Before Time, uh, Beyblades. So some of these, you probably have no idea what these games are. But anyway, I came from that world and I'll tell you why I left that world. It's because I used to work for five years designing these games and it was the coolest job in the world, one could say. People sometimes say, how would you, why would you leave such a world? You're crazy, right? They think, you know, this is a dream job, surely. The reason I left is because I became so frustrated. I thought one thing that I'm able to do is to make things look beautiful, look, make things look great. And I was using that one skill I had to turn you guys into zombies in front of their screen. You're not reading, you're not doing things, you know, that are productive and drawing and writing and and rather you were sitting there going with a the controller going like a zombie, right? Uh, I'm going to turn into a zombie playing these games. So that's why I left and I became an artist. I started to paint art on walls like you can see here, okay? Art that had some kind of meaning to them as well. I like painting colorful art, but not just art that was colorful, but also something that might make people think and feel something and they feel better than they do. So you can see these various examples of walls that I painted. This was talking about the importance and value of water things we take for granted in life all right we can just turn on the tap in the kitchen a few meters away but there are places in the world that i've seen with my own eyes where people have to travel miles to just to get water so these are the things that i like to paint about to remind people that you know we should be thankful we should be grateful before we complain about things we should always think about the very the blessings and the things that we are very fortunate to have in our lives so I like to paint murals, colorful murals. This one I like in particular, one of my favorite, because it was on the street that I was born and raised on, at a road called Anderton Road in Sparkbrook. Before I moved to King's Heath 35 years ago, I lived here. And this, I want to use this mural as a way to set the tone of some of the art that you're going to make it by the end of this session. Hope is the theme that we're going to use for your own art. How can we explore the concept of hope and what is hope exactly if I zoom in right now but you can see some letters there by the way hope written in a kind of bit of a funky way very important point here actually about when you're writing and when we're exploring handwriting right very important I'll tell you why because some of these letters might be look like a little bit you know pushing the boundaries and stylizing them in interesting ways but I tell you something, in order for you to do that, and that's what, as graffiti artists, which, which is what I am, uh, we enjoy pushing the limits of letters and how they bend and how they twist around. But actually you need to learn the rules of writing in the first place. So your handwriting lessons in school are so, so, so important to get your handwriting. I know it's very easy to think, you know, we've got keyboards and, you know, everyone's typing now, but handwriting, why is it important? so 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 important to learn the art of writing and once you learn the rules of handwriting then you might be able to push the boundaries you i always say you have to learn the rules of things first before you're able to then twist and bend and play okay so handwriting i used to love handwriting i still do i still always love writing a letter by hand it's so much more meaningful sometimes rather than a computer typing out text and you can see in this mural here, a mixture of different patterns actually, right? You can probably see these ones here, which are kind of a, a Celtic knot, yeah? You might explore that in some of your lessons at school, a pattern work of kind of historically, you'll hear about kind of maybe Irish or Scottish Celtic kind of patterns that I put in here. And that was to tell the story of this area that I lived in because we grew up in that area with a lot of Irish Irish uh, communities, a lot of people that we, we grew up playing with. And also alongside, and I, I say alongside because they kind of blend into each other, these kind of geometric Islamic patterns as well. These very intricate, carefully planned out Islamic patterns that you might perhaps see if ever you visit a mosque or you see prayer mats in the mosque or on the rugs. Um, these Islamic patterns were always decorated on the outside uh, of the mosques. But also, you'll be familiar with them in, perhaps from maths lessons because they were always, these were patterns that were 
always the, like intricately kind of mathematically kind of uh, calculated and it's something that uh, is familiar to you from there perhaps as well so these are other walls I'm gonna fly through some of these in different places around the world where I painted walls and this wall was talking about belief and about having a strong belief in something I'm sure some of the younger younger ones you wouldn't get this symbol of who these three figures are but some of the elders some of the teachers might be might discuss this with you I'll give you a little bit, little bit of a clue for you to discuss afterwards Mexico 1968 um, the back of Spark Hill swimming baths. It was actually the swimming baths where I learned to swim actually um, So it was quite an honor to paint the back of the building Unfortunately, it's now demolished and I've got a nice shiny glass building, but I did prefer this old building if I'm honest anyway, so and it's what it says on the back of it is a leap of faith, okay again It's kind of in keeping with our theme of hope It's about looking to the future and believing in yourself all of my art is about hope and positivity and uplifting ourselves. So this mural was no different. And it, as I said, it might be give you some ideas for your own artwork, what you might want to say in that billboard template that I showed you earlier. That's what I'm going to be getting you to do, by the way, is that billboard, a blank billboard that I'm going to help you draw. And then I'm going to get you to think about what would you want to say if you had a, a wall like I do or a billboard, a blank billboard, both of the same principle because it's people who are going into work, going into school, or just walking, going for a walk. You're seeing these messages out in the public space. And let's use those public spaces to say something to people. So they might be a bit sad going into work. And actually, then suddenly they see something colorful and a message that might make them think. So a leap of faith was what was written on this wall because I wanted to... Just remind people about this well-known saying that you might hear people say, take a leap of faith, but let's break it down. What does that mean? And there's a, there's a definition there. You can see, I've just zoomed in for you. What does that say? Trusting in something intangible, right? Intangible. So I know it's a hard word, but what does that mean? It's meaning means uh, something that you can't touch, you can't see, you can't feel. So when you take a leap of faith, Usually people say when, when they want you to just believe in yourself that yes, I know you think you can't do that bit of homework or you can't do this, you can't, you can't become an astronaut or an architect in future, but if you take a leap of faith and you trust in yourself and you trust in, if you're a religious person, you might trust in God, that God might guide you. Again, a hopeful message. You see a bulldozer here that actually destroyed or demolished rather this old building that was actually sitting behind that fence see the fence over there that was the original building I wanted to capture how the building looked beforehand but actually after the destruction of that building there was this very modern looking building behind it and hence you can see kind of the crumbling building a bunch of butterflies that emerge from it and butterflies are a symbol I always really love exploring with because what butterflies are such a hopeful, positive thing, aren't they? It's about transformation from something that's ugly, from a caterpillar to a beautiful, colorful thing. I always say that when something transforms from something that's generally quite ugly into something beautiful, that is so much more beautiful than just something that has always been beautiful because it's a transformation, something's changed, all right? So butterflies, I always like them, is basically what I'm saying, okay? So if you like butterflies too, then I think we can be friends, okay? Let's see what else we've got here. Some more murals I will share, share with you here. This is kind of hopeful. Sometimes you don't have to write the words hope like I did. Sometimes things can be more, what's the word, abstract, a little bit more, you know, you let people feel something without having to spell it out for them. So this girl here who's kind of blowing um, this flower and it's kind of, the petals are coming off. Actually, that in itself is hopeful and optimistic. She is looking upwards, right? She's got a glow around her face, right? She's looking to the sky in the same path of these planes that are flying. Who controls the past controls the future is what this mural says. And I'll let you guys in class work out who said that. Where does that saying statement come from? It's a very famous author. And again, you'll see what I always often do is got a bit of the kind of knots, the Celtic knots again, and a bit of that kind of geometric design. I thought 
Again, telling a story, because this was painted on the street that I lived on, a bit like the Hope mural. This was in front of it, in fact. Um, I decided to paint this and talk about the future. You are the future, remember? Right? You, um, as young people, you, a lot of the elders will be gone. A bit like my mum, she brought me up and now she's gone and, we pass, and she's now passed it on to me. And you, as the new uh, generation that we pass the baton on to, if you like, right, to say you guys can go and change the world. And this is a saying of the, of the, uh, the boxer Muhammad Ali. If my mind can conceive it and my heart can believe it, then I can achieve it. This is one of my favorite sayings of his, right? I want you to kind of think about that maybe after the session, but what that really means. And it's all about having belief and faith in yourself. Take a leap of faith that you can achieve something. If you commit to something and you say, I want to do this or I can do this, don't let anybody tell you that you cannot do this. And you especially don't think or feel that you can't do this. Everyone can do it. And you must do it and you will do it. All right? It might just take a bit of help. It might take a bit of perseverance. You might fail a number of times and it's okay. But you can achieve it, as Muhammad Ali the boxer said. And I did these little quotes after Muhammad Ali the boxer died, as you can see here, in 2016. And I painted these various statements across the streets of Birmingham that remind people about who he was. This was a wall I painted in Johannesburg in South Africa. And I love this one. You can see how big this is, just from the size of this chap walking here. You see him? There's various figures in this wall that you probably all will be studying at some point in school. From As you can start from the left, you see Gandhi to a guy called Steve Biko. Who's, these were all people who were civil rights activists, people who stood for truth and justice and all were positive and it was about, you know, trying to change the place that you live in and make it a better place, make it a better world. So Steve Biko, Gandhi, Muhammad Ali, of course, you can see his name written there. Maya Angelou from America, who spoke out against kind of racism in America and segregation. Che Guevara. And finally, Nelson Mandela. And he didn't live too far from here, here this place where, where I painted this. And let's look at the overall message here. What does it say? The people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Right? You get that? Now, that statement was said by none of these people, in fact. They all believed in that and they practiced that in the work in their lives. But who actually said these words was someone much more recent that I'm sure you will know. Many of you will know the name of. If you don't know the name of the person who said this, right, then I'll give you a clue of who might have said these beautiful words. Right? The clue's coming up now and it's going to float into the screen in a second. Check this out. You ready? It's floating. Okay. This is not a Samsung. As you can see, this is an iPhone. And now it's going to drift out of the screen again. Another clue, if you're looking at the top view, in fact, let me jump to my wide studio shot here. Here we go. I'm going to give you a clue. iPad iMac, iPad again here, and my iPhone. So who is it? Steve Jobs said that, okay? Steve Jobs was the founder of Apple. Another wall here for you here in Birmingham. You can see me standing on a ladder there, just to give you an idea of scale, okay? There's probably images there you recognize. The side of the bull ring, Selfridges, St. Martin's Church, okay? And you can see the geometric patterns come into it again. Okay, you see an army tank actually with what looks like a chap throwing a shoe at the army tank. Okay, all right, there we have it. Oh, and there we go. We have got a giant baby in a womb there on a wall. Okay, and that was when my son was first born. I painted this mural. All right, change, be the change you wish to see in the world. I'll let you guess who said that, and that's part of the quiz. Uh, to research, be the change that you want to see in the world, you actually be it. Okay, oh, 
I think we can end on this screen and a bit of gaming, okay? This is the company I used to work for. These are some of the graphics for some of the games. You can see that all the menu screens and things that I used to design. Flintstones, that's the game I made. And the platform, uh, it wasn't the Game Boy Advance, it was for the Sega Dreamcast. Some of your parents might remember this machine. But all of these graphics you're looking at were all designed by me. Uh, as you go into the game, all the menus and you know the colors, the way it looked and felt is what I did. Okay, so I think you'll be able to tell where the influence of the colors, the vibrancy of the gaming colors, if you like, were now you can see the influence in my art. The future belongs to those who prepare for it today. Okay, and you can see this young boy on his phone, or is it a phone, is it a book? He might be reading from a tablet, but the point is he's sitting there focused on what looks like he's reading something, yeah? And we're talking, when I talk about the future belongs to those who prepare for it today, I'm talking about you guys, all right? The next generation that you're gonna go and carry on and change this world long after People like me might be gone, right? And that's the cycle of life. People come and they go, they don't live forever, but they pass on the knowledge. That's why learning and what you're doing in school is so, so, so important, because you're learning something that you might implement in future. You might actually practice it out. Every little thing that we learn from handwriting, I used to maybe even question like you, what's the point of doing nice, pretty handwriting? But now as an artist, I say, wow, I needed to know those rules for when I paint this mural that you can see here. You might be familiar with this. I painted this on New Year's Day. A bit of a message about um, 2021. The COVID symbol here that we're familiar with, that circle with the little lines coming out of it, exploding away, you can see here, all right? And then you see a bunch of birds breaking off from the 2021 and a little chain link. Oh, it feels like we chained. When we're at home, stuck at home under the lockdown, it does feel like we're a bit like locked up, right? We're not allowed to go. But then you see a bit of hope here because the bird's breaking away from this number one here. Yeah, so 2021, I hope is a year that will be a new year for us, for us to make change. And we have patience and we try and just hold, hold things down a little bit and wait until things improve for us. I'm going to show you where I am. This is my green screen behind me. So all of what you've been seeing has just been done because of my green screen. Right? I can take the background out and yeah, so there we have it. And that is my studio here, or my garage actually. So moving on to the next activity, drawing of our billboard template. Now the reason why I'm giving you a, a billboard with black ink on a white background, drawing that, is because I know how hard it is when you've given an A4 sheet of paper like this, right? and you do your design on there and it seems to just get lost, it's floating in lots of white space. And you can't really visualize in your head how your art is kind of placed, if you like. So I'm giving you a framing device, if you like, a black billboard in ink, so you can place your art inside of it. So you can almost imagine how it would, your art is going to look when it's put in the streets. And that helps us a little bit just to frame our art in a nice way, yeah? Um, so I'm going to do that first of all on my iPad here, as you can see, using an Apple Pencil, Apple Starter Stylus. And um, not all of you will have access to an iPad and a pencil, but just in case in future one day you do, maybe in school even, you might be able to draw. I'm just going to give show you how fun it can be using uh, digital tools, but also the old good old-fashioned way of using pen and paper. Got some nice pens here, okay, calligraphy pens that we're going to be using to draw onto the paper as well, okay? So I'm gonna show you both methods, okay? So let's begin by, I'm sure, you know what? I think you'd prefer to see my entire iPad, right? So let's jump down. Oh, let's get me out of the way. You don't need to see me. There we go, I think that's probably the best view. Which one should we go with that one? Or let's go, let's go with this one. Here we go. So great thing about digital is can draw straight lines and this is without a ruler and it's quite fun to do so right so check this out let's first of all get a nice rectangle shape a big two fire brush so I'm going to slide that down to there and then go on like this oh try again Let's 
restaurant and you'll see that it's probably a little bit wonky which is also fine because we can just bend the corner and make sure we get it or I can even stretch it that way a bit wider these are the things you probably couldn't do so well with pen and paper but it's okay you've got something called an eraser right a rubber for that so let's place our nice rectangle there it doesn't have to be completely perfect but just to give you an idea now what does a billboard have it has a nice big pillar well actually uh, you don't really see them much in this country but in America you'd get big chunky kind of pillar at the bottom the American style billboards which I've always found and I've seen them when I've been abroad they always look quite interesting <laughs> just the structure so I'm going to give it a nice chunky structure like that is that in the middle? not quite, let's make it wider there we have it draw across <coughs> you can fill that in black there we go <coughs> oh I think I'm going to shrink it from the sides a bit because I think I've just done it a bit too big let's do that okay shrink it a bit more there and I'm going to extend that color that in you're all with me guys I'm just checking you guys can see there we go and then I'm going to draw what might be a kind of structure around it which is like a kind of a platform where people who paste up the uh, billboards they usually climb a ladder and get to the top to so I'm just gonna this can be all a bit rough no harm in that sometimes you can't be too precise with these things it's always good to have a bit of flexibility and a little bit of scratchy lines here and there are good, it gives it a bit of life it's not so perfect perfect is not good for me I think perfect is sometimes, not all the time doesn't mean you get make mistakes on purpose in maths lessons <laughs> but in art certainly having a bit of imperfection is how we grow and how we learn so and it suggests a bit of life, you know. We human beings, we always need to sometimes make mistakes to come make something even better. So always learn how to make mistakes and don't see them as a negative thing all the time. Okay, so there we have it. I think I'm going to do a bit more, a bit more here. See, we can make it up as we go along. Nobody really knows. Oops. Nobody really knows what exactly is under there. I've never climbed a billboard to see what's underneath, but I just, from pictures, you can kind of imagine that there's some kind of base and some wiring and things. So, no harm in. It's just making it up a little bit. There is always a bit of symmetry to it, which is, if you notice, try to make sure that each side is similar in length and width and height as well. Let's put a little ladder in there. Oh, I think that's too thick a line for a ladder. Let's go for a thinner line. And then have it maybe going side. Oh, not that one. Maybe that way. A bit to the a bit angled is okay. And let's stick a maybe just make it a bit more. There we go. Bit of a ladder, maybe another pole on that side. No harm in doing that. With a few things sticking out of it like that is okay. There we go. There's that kind of base. Oh, I think we should do some kind of lights overhanging the top as well it's just some kind of bar at the top no harm in that and maybe it might have a couple of lights shining down you know? oh they're a bit rough I'm gonna delete those out don't have a rubber here I just have to tap the screen and there we go um, I've got I need a rubber now I'm gonna change because there's a few things I want to rub out like this bit here I need to get that straight some things can be left a bit raw, raw like there are lines down there but that had to be symmetrically right so there we go in fact you know what there's a couple of these though that can go up there that should be rubbed out it should be nice and straight there these top ends can be a bit more organic 
That's what I meant about rough lines. Sometimes things can just be left a bit raw and organic and it adds a bit of life to things. And you kind of have things that are left. Just tidying it up a little bit because there is a balance. Sometimes you don't want it to look too raw and rough. But just enough so that it hasn't you've not completely done been too too clinical and too sharp. So take that out, there we go. I think we oh let me take it. There's a few random bits that do tidying up here. Nice and clean here, I think. There we go. Okay. What else? Ooh, there's some random floating bits wouldn't make sense. Because they, they just kind of seem to be floating in midair. So there we have it. Okay. There is our billboard that we've just a blank billboard that I want to you know something? I would like you also to think about a background as well, right? Let's get a light color, like a gray, and let's, um, let's just do some, like there's a city behind perhaps, or something like that. Maybe just some buildings like this. A distant building, maybe like it's on a waterfront, or a canal or something, or a river. But just a future city, it could be just anywhere in the future any place so if you notice what I'm doing I'm kind of having buildings as if it's on a riverfront right some random buildings some towers and spikes maybe a spire it might be like a future city where it's a church or something or a temple with a, with a little spike at the top there we go so we do some kind of a domed a bit of a dome thing going on here. Let's go there. Like it's a temple or a mosque. Like a futuristic mosque because you've got like a big spire coming at the top. Even the church could be a futuristic church with a, with a long tower coming out the top. As if it's some kind of a crazy pole that sticks out the top. <laughs> yeah, that might work. Yeah, why not? Let's go with that. All right, now here we go. Now that we have our base done, I would like you to think, let's get a nice bright, bright color. Let's talk about change, right? That's what comes to mind. Hope and change is what I'd like you to explore in your art. So let's, let's explore what we might write here. I'm going to write nice, funky, cool letters. Change. Let's just start with that. That's what comes to my head. Okay. And notice how I'm exploring the spacing of the letters. Now they're all nice even space between each letter. Some of the rules that we should be thinking about when you do your handwriting about spacing between letters. These are all important letters uh, lessons you should bear in mind when you're talking when you're doing typography or letter lettering and design. Okay. If you see movie posters or game posters, all the rules that are, will go into making the graphics for for the um, Sorry, not the graphics, the packaging or a poster design. These are all rules that you will have to know about. Okay, so I've written the word change as if it's kind of a title for a movie almost. Right? Let's have a few drips as if they're paint drips. It's quite dramatic, isn't it? Yeah, you've seen someone's written change on a billboard, almost as if someone's taken it over. Right? Let's give it a little underlining, underlying feature. I quite like the idea of having a little bit of, there we go, that all sound, look and feel right, everyone happy with that, are you happy with that guys? So let's say, there's the words change we've written, but just change alone, is that enough, or should we say something along the top? Let's take on a statement that I'd mentioned earlier, which was, be the change. I'm going to change colour back to black, I think, as opposed to the red, and say, Let's zoom in a bit for you guys here. And I'm going to say, be the change. Oop, let me get that lettering a bit. Oh, let's start again. Let me take, let me take it back. Oh, again. And give it a few goes. Be the, there we go. A bit more life to it, right? And get the line weight the same because some rules that you have to follow when it comes to lettering, which is 
some of the letters need to just be the right weight as well. They all need to be the same thickness. Okay, so let's just see. The good thing about that is we can position it. We can stretch it and move it around. Move that. Let's say we could do that there. We could move it anywhere. Let's try there. Be the change. There we go. Just going to add a bit of color into things, into the background, so that the billboard begins to stand out a bit. I think that would make it look nice. Get a soft airbrush, as you can see, all my different brushes. Just what we call vignetting of the corners, just to bring in the color and kind of give the whole painting a bit of focus. So a nice gentle orange glaze around the back. Helps us pull the eye to the center a bit more. There we go. Might just get a bit of a darker orange. Just go in a bit darker on the corners again to help that vignetting. There we go. Because I've shown you how to do that on an iPad, but I'd like to show you on paper now. Let me jump to another screen here. Paper, here we go. I'm going to move to this shot here. Let me get the camera looking down on the paper. Here we go. I've got two, two things here. I've got a piece of large card, and I've also got a postcard size. I like postcards because postcards can help you sometimes with um, not being scared by loads of white space. It's just a nice way to do a little graphic. You can keep that and put that on your wall in your bedroom. So we can either go, you could do that with paper, you can cut it down as well. Postcards, if you want to try a postcard size or something as, as, as small as a postcard, you'll see it's probably slightly, it might be easier for you to try something small if you want to. And it's a nice, nice little size that you can keep you know, hang on your fridge or hanging, hang, hang in your bedroom. I'm going to just show you a real, real quick one. Let me get a better pen to fill that in quicker. There we go. There we go. Just super quick, this one, just to kind of show you that actually something smaller is okay you know sometimes easier for you to manage as well okay you can see yeah let me just put in a bit of detail should we get our lights on the billboard as well i think we can do that and then maybe some kind of Lights hanging down, some kind of... And then what we might write inside, let's think about this, let's think of another quick word. Let's explore with hope. There we go. Hope. We have hope. Let's try something else in the middle. Hang on, in the top. Let's go with what other colors do I have? No, let's try with the black. I'm going to write with we have. There we go. What I'm going to do here very quickly, shouldn't really do this. Well, I should, it's okay. Because I'm going to use a water-based spray can here, not these ones here. I'm going to show you, I'm just going to give you an idea of how a spray can works. These are water-based cans, so you can see here it is water-based. So it's okay to do use a bit of this indoors. But generally, I think in future when, I, when the things get better, I can come into school and show you, I can show you how bit of noise there we go that's all I'm gonna do water based is okay in, indoors but outdoors you shouldn't be using you should uh, use the other ones outdoors but there you go I just did that just to show you a little bit of spray texture just give it a bit of interest okay so there we have it um, our 
activity. I want you to all have a go at this because Mr. Bradshaw will be collecting these in and um, and would like to display them and, and keep them. So I would all like you to think about what is it that you want to say to the world. You've got an opportunity here to say something about the, what you're going through, what you're feeling in response to the lockdown or whatever you want to say about the world that we live in. You have an opportunity, golden opportunity to say something here. But if you notice, we've gone minimal because we've got simple, only a little bit of space here. With billboards or when I'm painting a mural, I always think about breaking the message down to something quite simple as opposed to a whole story that's written, right? Because you only have a few seconds to communicate your message in a billboard. People are driving fast and then they will see in only four or five seconds as they're driving, they won't see, uh, they might not be able to see or interpret your message. So think about how you want to say things um, in a very simple and eye-catching way, just like this one here. As you can see on my desk, you can see the letters are bold enough that catches your eye and you'll read the words hope. Thank you. Hope you've enjoyed the lesson, guys. Look after yourselves. Thank you.